Welcome back to Anchor Designs, I'm James, let's get started. Today's video, we're going to be trying something a little bit different. So, I do like restoring old machines, collecting old machines, refurbing old machines, and using old machines. And of which, I love doing all of that apart from the cleaning, the grinding. Um, so anything to make it a little bit easier, in my eyes, the better. I've been experimenting and you'll see some of the photos that I put up on Instagram. If you want to know the link, it should be right here. Um, of which I've been using a cement mixer. Now, I know that this isn't a new thing. This is what some people have been doing it. I've been looking at um, vibrating tumblers. Used to use one at work for many, many years uh, for laser cut parts and plasma cut parts, that type of thing. Great. Um, but for using it to take off paint, using it to take off rust and not really damaging the parts, that's another thing. Um, and the cost of a decent industrial grade um, vibro polishing machine, like a coffin rumbler or a big rotary tumbler, is a lot of money. So I've been doing a little bit of research, doing a little bit of um, investigating, and it turns out a cement mixer is pretty good. So. I was going to build one, uh, I got a gas bottle, I got a right angle drive gearbox and I was going to build one and the build cost was roughly about £200, 200 quid. Uh, I went on Facebook Marketplace and I bought a Bell Mini Mix, it's a used one, it's 240 volts so I can use it in my workshop uh, and I paid 30 quid for it so mm, I wasn't expecting a lot. Um, but I wasn't expecting what I got. So I was really impressed with it. So on Instagram, I put on some photos before and after, which should kind of look like this. Um, and I'll show you these parts in a minute. They've literally just come out of the um, mixer five minutes and they have been in genuinely 28 minutes. Um, so today's video is going to be showing you deburring parts and I'm going to do a restoration on this which is a, a twin headed uh, round faced blacksmith hammer if you want to call it that I'm going to call it that um, it is very old it's very knackered it needs a new it needs reshafting and it needs a head cleaning up it's not bad it's pretty menky and I could do it with a wire wheel if I wanted to but I'm going to use the cement mixer so I'll show you what I've got here um, and I'll show you what I'm using and how much everything's cost me so far. So I have got a few different items on here. This is part of a old tailstock that I just chucked in. Uh, it was green colour. It did look like this. This was already damaged on here. Um, and this is what it's kind of done. I just chucked it in this hole. Um, it was all seized up and I think the shock of everything it's loosened everything up uh, which is pretty great I'll put up a photo of what it looked like before if I haven't already done so this was very rusty um, and it had a lot of crap on it which isn't good and then I had my granddad's adjustable backo or backo uh, adjustable that could do with a little bit longer uh, but the actual polished faces that was up previously has come up a lot better than it was I had this vice that was pretty minging and it's covered in the rock dust and I have this adjustable Fordson tractor spanner it's a snail brand it has the pretty cool snail on there uh, and this is cleaned up really really well I'm just gonna grab a rag and this was bad. This has never been cleaned by me or definitely by the person who had it before. But it was black and pretty minging. I will admit that the... Is it garnet? Do you call it garnet? I don't know if it's called garnet. But the abrasive stones that I've been using um, is stuff that you put in your garden. It's like uh, rock stuff. I'll put up the correct name 
um, in the top of the screen. Um, but I must admit, it's done really, really well um, for this type of stuff. Um, I put in some old pliers that I had as well. I don't know what brand these were. It doesn't say, it's just a cheap make, I think. Uh, what I will say though is mixing different heavy parts like this with, I had some of my anchor squares in there, which are outside, but it has bent the, the outsides of them, which has caused a little bit of a, of an issue. Um, so if you are doing big things like this, I think either do them on their own or with other big things perhaps. Um, and it is quite aggressive. Just seeing here, this wasn't perfect, but it is just hot rolled, hot rolled steel, but it's taken off the, the outside edge, the, what do you call it? Oh, the oxide layer. Um, it's taken off that edge in 28 minutes. This vice has just been abused. You, you shouldn't really put machine vices in there, but this was a, uh, a pillar drill one that I bought many, many years ago. And I think with putting in bigger stuff, could damage the thread. I think it has a little bit. But for heavy duty tractor agricultural type stuff like this, things like that, that was already damaged. Um, and I think the hammerhead, which is what we're going to put into now. So I'm going to get a few close ups of this. I think this is pretty good. Downsides to it. It's really noisy. It is really, really noisy. Um, and it's not something you want to be having if you live in a housing estate. And for where I am, in pretty much the middle of nowhere, and I'm surrounded by water. So, uh, yeah, it, I get away with it. Um, but it is really, really noisy. Um, but anyway, let's cut off the handle, let's punch out the centre, and we'll chuck it in the cement mixer. This is the stainless part, just very, very quickly, and that's what it's done to it. This is meant to be flat, and this is one of the grips um, to the squares that I make. Um, and obviously something has caught in between there, and something really heavy has, has smacked it on there. So, thin stuff with big stuff, not ideal. And this is, you know, 2 mil 304 stainless, so it's, you know, it's pretty good. But, that's now scrap. Might be a little bit dark. Ow. And the audio footage a little bit bad. Welcome to the attic. So, here we are. Okay, it's on, it's really loud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a timer on a time lapse, and we'll see how long it takes. The uh, the mixer's still running. Uh, I'm now wearing a hat, um, so let's go see what it looks like. We've had it on for 30-ish minutes, 33 minutes. Um, so let's see what the results are. Okay. I'm pretty pleased with that. For 30 minutes-ish, it's quite a, an abused and used hammerhead. I'm going to dry it off. Yeah, I'll take that. We have a stone in there. And there we are, that is the finished-ish article. Um, now what? I think it's been abused that badly. We've got a chip out of the top there that we could do something with. Um, it's not bad. The crown of the hammer face isn't too bad. That one's pretty flat on there. So I don't know if that was meant to be rounded, as you can see on there. Uh, hammerheads are a real art and they're a 
many, many collectors out there that know a lot more than I do. It has a small X on it that I didn't see before. I just want to hit things with it. That's all I want to do. So let's make a shaft. Let's use the new bandsaw. Um, get the spoke shave out. This is being done by hand. We're not buying a hammer shaft. And I think I'm using ash. Which is an okay hammer handle. I think. Um, it's nice and hard. Nice and durable. And it takes the vibration out. Which is good. And it's all I have. I have got mahogany. But because of... I don't think mahogany makes good hammer handles. But I use mahogany as a wedge for the top. And then to put in the... Uh, they splice them there, so let's get started. Okay, we are back. The workshop is now clean and tidy, and I even hoovered. We have the hammer head. somewhere okay so we have the hammer head we have the old shaft and we now need to remake this shaft we need to wedge it uh, of which I have already these in stock these are a similar size to that one there um, so yeah this is what we're going to use and tools we are going to use these tools we are going to use uh we're going to use a tenon saw to cross cut on the long board that we have we're going to use um, a spoke shave which is one of these there are many like it but this one is mine um i like the 151 and i also like uh what's this a 64 these i i've had this one for years uh, I painted it, I made it look pretty. I really like using this one. These are a little bit nicer because they have the adjusters on the top. Makes it a little bit easier to use, but once you get a good feel for it and understand how to sharpen these, works absolutely fine. This one I've never used. I have used it and I didn't like it. Uh, this one is quite collectible, so I didn't like using it and it probably needs a restore at some point. Very, very nice don't like using it so i'm either going to use a 151 or the 64. Um, these are pretty cheap worth doing um, i'm not going to use a bandsaw because you might not have a bandsaw i like using hand tools for woodworking so it's not going to be right or wrong we're making a hammer shaft you know it's whatever's going to fit your hand there's not a right way or a wrong way how to make these you can do it with an axe if you wanted to um, I might be using a draw bar as well, which looks like one of these, um, which is quite nice to use. These are quite expensive, and I haven't sharpened mine, and it has a split in it, but it works. It works as it should. Um, future project will be me making one of these in the forge using a metal file. So, nice little project there. If you want to see that, Hit that subscribe so you see it. Now, I could be wrong, but this here, I'm pretty sure it's wood. Okay, so this stuff, <laughs> on a serious note, I believe, is English ash. Um, it is quite knotty, this piece here, uh, but it is really, really nice wood, and I've got an abundance of it. Um, so I am going to be using this. One end, for how I've stored it, has gone a bit manky. The other end is absolutely fine. So we're going to cut off a piece, probably about here. Um, when you're rehammering a handle, reshafting a hammer, keep the old hammer as a template. So we're just going to cut across here nice and square so we can use it again. And then we'll split it down here, maybe with an axe or a chisel. I have many, many tools, but I don't have a wood vise. Apart from this, Stanley Aluminium 5702. Ah, it will do. I'll get something at some point. 
could put it in a metal vise, but I don't want to leave marks in it. And I've been doing some oily stuff. Uh, I got knackered halfway through. Uh, it's really tough stuff, this. Um, so uh, I've followed down to the line. It split really nicely. Um, so we're just going to use a chisel on here. And then probably plane it and keep working on it. Time lapse time. So we have our rough cut blank. I've planed up the sides and um, planed up really, really nicely. I just used a standing number four. Uh, I'm not going to go too mad. I'm, I'm not going to wind in sticks and you know, get all that crap out. We are just making this. So I'm going to scribe around this now. And what I'm probably going to do um, is what I usually do is I fit the head first and then shape the shaft around putting the head on. Um, I don't know if that's how, how other people do it, but that's the, what I've done previously. Um, so let's scribe around this because this feels pretty, it fits my hand pretty well. Um, that's a good size. So we're going to stick to that sort of profile there. Might plane it down just a little bit more. We've probably got about a quarter inch um, to, to take off just on the top there, maybe a little bit more. Um, keep planing it down and then maybe taper it down a little bit You can do most things with a plane. It's hard work, but it, it's You know, I have a bandsaw and I have a Big sander there, but it's I like using the hand tools I'm using the spoke shave now, and I'm just starting to get that profile down to size So it doesn't take much and you can overdo it. So keep uh, keep checking the, the hole Keep coming back, get yourself comfortable, put a podcast on or whatever and just start working your way down. Nice and easy. Okay, so we've marked out the top piece here like that and just going to do a little bit of a test fit. So we're starting to get there now. Hopefully you can see that in there. So once you've got your outer profile a lot of the times you'll have to note and put a little bit of a mark on here that hammers are actually one holes bigger than the other um, I think look pretty similar actually it depends some of them are some of them aren't I've done some before I think axes especially are more tapered but that's the top of it anyway because X marks the spot I'm assuming so just got to keep going down now and marking it up and giving it a little bit of a wiggle and then you'll have bruising that comes across on the top here so which kind of indicates where you need to where you need to take off um, but we're we're getting there okay so this is where we are right now i've gone over with a spoke shave i have used a standing knife blade just as a little small scraper to take out any little imperfections and cut marks give a little try at the top x marks the spot so that's now looking pretty good on that i'm just going to give it a bit of a tap on the base so we're now at the top there and um, we've got a really nice fit up on here we've got no score lines on the base if we give it a few more thumps and um, that will fill in quite nicely so what we're going to do now is put this to one side and we're going to start working on the handle itself um, but that's what you're kind of looking for and you want this to be as square um, as possible with the heads uh, and that's roughly what we're aiming for around that so nice fill in in the bottom bit of a gap at the top ready to be uh, to be split and drove in nice And 
here we are. We've pretty much finished now. Apart from we need to split the top, make a wedge, and then give it an oil. Box come out really nicely. I hope the camera is picking it up all right. And then there. Almost there. We have the handle now looking nice and swanky. Uh, we have the slit in the top. We've made our wedge to fit, which looks quite smart. Round about there. I go typically the length. You're going to trim a lot of this off, I think, anyway. So just something to, to bear in mind. Um, fit up of the handle. X marks the spot. We're going to hit this on the base a few times and then maybe some on the top just to get it really really grounded um, but that's looking that's looking quite nice it's probably going to go down uh, maybe another half inch three eight something like that I like the head to be slightly uh, to be slightly over um, some people do, some people don't. I can flush trim it. We'll see what it looks like when it's done. See now, the cheeks haven't scraped up anything. We've got a really perfect fit on there, which is great. Not a bad effort, that. And we're looking nice and square as well. Okay, let's get that wedge in. Before I put the wedge in, I think what I'm actually going to do is trim off the top just a little bit. Because if we, if we cut off most of that wedge there, we're only going to have... We're not going to have enough, I don't think. So let's cut that off while it's like this now, because um, it's not a it's not a two two time job. This. I'm just going to put just a little bit of linseed oil on the top in there. All that's going to do is just help you drive it home. And there we are. Okay, I'm going to grab a really small plane and just go over that. And here it is guys, our finished blacksmith hammer. Own main handle, all done by hand, wedged in the top, really pleased with that. And it's ready to be put back to use. It's nice and balanced, it's nice and gripped at the top, it fits my hand just how I like it. Now it's going to get covered in black stuff and get really filthy. <laughs> 
If you liked what you see, uh, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, we've got a few more of these to do on more smaller uh, filly hammers. So we've got a few um, body hammers, some planishing hammers that we need to um, reshaft and rehandle. Um, and they're a bit more of like a, an octagon shape, uh, which is quite nice. We've got those to do. The next video is probably going to be making the milling machine cabinet. Uh, which is something I'm really looking forward to, getting that sorted and uh, being more organised in the shop. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.